We're now live with episode three of Amplified for IGTV. Let's wait for the people them to come in the room so we can get started. I'm excited, tired, but excited. I'm not gonna lie. Just gonna wait for people to show up and then we're getting into it. Hey, Courtney, lovely to see you in the room. Once a few people have joined, we're gonna just get straight into this one. I'm so excited for this episode. I hope everybody gets involved. Remember to share this live with your um, followers so that we get more people coming into the room and joining. The little arrow to the bottom right of the screen is what you press. You'll stay in the live, but you'll be able to share it with your followers uh, just so that more people can get into it. Courtney, I'll see you, man. I can't wait to see you in real life, girl. I feel like it's been about 10 freaking years, never mind a year. It's too much. Hello, bro. Man like Jay Brown is in the place. Pressure, under pressure. <laughs> oh, we're just waiting for more people to join the live and then we're gonna get straight into this one, talking all things body confidence this week. This is such an important one for everybody. So uh, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into it. Share the live, guys, share this. Use the um, arrow, like I said, the envelope at the bottom right of your screen. Send it to your followers. Let's get people logging on. Hey, Emily, nice to have you. Yes, hello, Zach, my boy, Zach. Always happy to see Zach on the live. All right, let's get into this. So this is Amplified for IGTV. It's all about offering you some light relief from the current times, but talking to real people in real time about real stories that we can all relate to, as well as having some fun with it. We're only gonna be on the live for about half an hour, 40 minutes, and I encourage you to get involved, especially when we start playing the game. Everybody knows how I love the game. Uh, I'm gonna bring my guest into the room. Let me find her. You know, sometimes I come on this thing and you best believe I don't remember how to even... Uh, I'm on this live every week. What's wrong with me? Uh, True say I'm tired this week. But yeah, let me bring my guest in. I can't wait. Hey, girl! Hey! Oh, oh my God. Looking like so a spice! Hey! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hey, everyone. My name is Shalana Azora. I'm a singer. I'm a songwriter. I'm also a filmmaker, so I'm just an all-round creative, whatever you want to call it. My job titles, the list goes on, but I'm an all-round creative, so yeah. You really are. And we, <laughs> she and I met moons ago, maybe, I don't know, eight years ago, maybe longer than that. Um, and I only found out just the other day from Shalana that her first radio interview was with me. Was. I had no idea. It was, and it was such a special moment because I was just like stepping out of uni at these times pursuing yes. film and it was just nice to just be recognized you know like I really appreciate the fact that you just support up and coming artists it's just it's so nice always. and it was such a great interview I loved it oh thank you not always that's what it's all about man I, I say it all the time sometimes I get in trouble for it but Minakir we all know I'm Ms. Real Talk <laughs> as much as I like the likes of JLo we everybody knows who JLo is why does JLo yeah. need another platform she doesn't but you need the platform because who knows you and you're dope like you are, everything you do, everything you're about. Right, let's get into your chosen subject because this is one that's close to my heart, close to the heart of many people. Uh, yeah. We're talking all things body confidence. So share with us in your own words, however you feel to do so, uh, yeah. why this is so important to you. Share with us your experience. Oh, it's so important to me. To be honest, when you, when you asked me to pick a topic, it was a no-brainer because I feel like this has been an ongoing battle with myself and I know a right. lot of other people in the industry, not only people in the industry, but just women in general and men, because I think we forget about men yes. as well sometimes. Yes. But yes. it's an ongoing thing, and especially with the rise of social media, the way that everything's set up right now, the pressure to look a certain way is so, so real. And me. And we can see I don't care with that. Yes. <laughs> Listen. I'm a little and, power, look. <laughs> exactly. And me being a woman in the industry, like trying to make it, I've been told so many different kind of points of view. There's people that say to me, you know, if you want to make it, you need to look like this, you know, lo lose weight, get this kind of, you know, this kind of look, this kind of Lose image. weight? Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. From where? Your big toe. <laughs> you got no weight to lose, girl. 
<laughs> listen, <laughs> Who are these people? Listen, but it's just such a normalized mentality because yes, it's such an, in an industry that is so dominated by image, like, and that's the realness yes. of it. No matter what we, no matter how the love hate relationship I have with it. That's the reality yeah. of the situation. So but it got really bad for you because at, at, at one point you needed to step away from everything and you were looking at yourself in a particular way and you were thinking, okay, maybe I'm not right as I am. What what led to all of that? Yeah, this it's, I'm just reading the comments right now, which is it's hilarious. But um, <laughs> what led to that was, um, it's crazy because I remember I was talking to you about Back then, so this was like 2017, after leaving uni, I yeah. was in, not in a, a very good relationship. My, the relationship that I was in was very toxic. And right. I feel like that played a big part in the way that I saw myself and the way that I started okay. to like have my... I'm not, I'm not saying that was the only reason, but I think it was a, a contributing factor to how yeah. I was feeling about myself. And at these yeah. times, I was a size eight. I was, you know, wow. skinny me. But the way that I saw myself and... I kid you yeah. not, like when I look back at my pictures and I see how I, my actual body, it's two different people. Like, and that's where the whole, like, like the whole body dysmorphia disorder that I didn't actually know about at this time um, when I was yeah. suffering with it. I had no idea what that was, but it only occurred to me after when I looked back at my photos and I was like, oh, wow, like, you were actually really slim. But in my oh, head, yeah. I was the biggest person. I was, I hated myself. And that is putting it wow. in the most like, kind of it's really hard to describe that feeling of like looking in the mirror did you look did like, you look to social media because so i know social media affected you negatively but were you yeah. looking at social media for comfort were you looking at social media thinking well surely on social media i'm going to find how i'm supposed to look then I'm supposed, what was it about social media what how did that impact you yeah so at this time instagram was like popping off quite a lot this is kind of the main platform that everyone's using and yeah. i would look on there thinking this is what everyone wants this is what guys want this is what everyone yeah. thinks is pretty this is what wow. everyone appreciates you know so i at one point when i was really in my worst um place i would scroll on instagram and i would i literally burst into tears like i couldn't actually yeah, I couldn't yeah. look on Instagram anymore because I would see images yeah. of girls and sp I'm, I'm saying girls because that's what really at the time affected me because I was comparing myself to other yes, females yeah. and other people so yeah. I would see pictures of girls and I would be like oh my gosh I don't look like that oh my gosh you know I'm never gonna be this and it would just mm. make me just burst into tears every time and then I realized <laughs> okay this is a trigger like I started to realize the pattern and decided at that time that I need to... Do you know what? Me. Not to... Not sorry to interrupt you, but I love that you said that. You yeah. started to notice patterns. Yeah. Because that plays a big part in being able to then overcome it. So important. And I think so many people wow. that, you know, might have similar feelings to me or have experienced what I'm feeling, sometimes don't know what the trigger is and they might not be able exactly. to assess that. Exactly. And that was yeah. the biggest thing for me that helped me because once I realized, okay, every time I go on Instagram, I feel like this, this is the feeling. And I always tell people, you need to think about what, how things make you feel. If you're yes. in a situation and your spirit and your, your feeling is making you feel a certain way, that, that's saying something to you. And that means that mm. something about you need yeah. to remove yourself from the situation. So I deactivated my Instagram for about- How far did it, did it get to you? So how far did it go to you? How far did it go for you? Because remember, you, you came away from everything. You went missing for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, where is this girl? She was churning out music and, you know, yeah. churning out the, the videos and doing the projects of Under London, which we're going to talk about. And then all yeah. of a sudden you were MIA. Yeah. So what was that big thing that was like, okay, I need to just bounce from all of this now? It was, what, how did well, it, get that, that? It, it was that, you know, the feeling that I had to, about myself, that knowing that I no longer love myself being in a really wow. bad relationship that had already broken me to the point where I just looked at myself and like, how did I get here? Because when you, this, it's a very slow process. And I think what people don't mm. understand, like obviously abuse is a whole nother topic, but you know, yeah. it does, it does affect the way it kind of brainwashes you into thinking things about yourself that are not true. So at, at that point, that's when I decided that, okay, I need to heal. I need to take a step back. I need to focus on myself. And I need to look in the mirror and stop seeing what I'm seeing because evidently it's Absolutely. not real. That the people, people would not. You know how many people want to look like you, <sighs> Bridget? 
Listen, yo! It's a real... <laughs> the thing is, what I've realised is that it doesn't matter what people tell you. People could constantly spit... It's true, it's ...compliments true. at you and be like, you're so it's pretty, true. you're so this, you're so that. But if you don't believe it yourself, and if you don't yeah. love yourself, it means nothing. Like, But you, you know what's well... really interesting? Do you know what's really interesting about what you've just said? It doesn't matter what people say to you. Yet here's the thing, somehow it seems to matter to people what they see on social media. Now social media ain't talking to you. Yeah. Your mind is doing that. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? When you see certain things on social media, no one's preaching that. They've just put it out there and you make up your mind about it. It's really, it's, I just find that really, yeah, I just find that really interesting. Comparison is the thief of joy. And genuinely, when I hear that and I, I started to understand, that if you're constantly trying to compare yourself to the people that you're yes. seeing on social yes. media, not yes. knowing what their life is really like, because the realness is, yes. most people are not balling like that. Most people don't have all these things that they're stumbling on. Trust the me, brethren. Trust me. Like, the <laughs> realness talk. is, like, and I'm not going to put down anyone that decides to get their body surgically enhanced, because it's everyone's choice. But because yeah. we don't have yeah. the, the, the openness about, you know, who's got their body done, who's got their face done, it's the lines are blurred. So when someone like definitely, me, definitely. or even someone younger that has no idea that these things even exist, they're looking at that and thinking that's 100% natural, that's real. How comes I don't have that hourglass figure? Yeah, How comes yeah, I yeah. can't do that? It's, it's unrealistic standards, really. And What's the turning point for you? You've gone through all of that. You're not, you're not feeling that you love yourself or like yeah. yourself. You want it to change how you look. It gets so bad. You have to come off social media, come away from people, go underground. Nobody can, can get in touch with you. you know what I'm saying? But then you've done this, this massive U-turn oh because you've God. got your confidence back. You're back on socials. You've got a new single out tomorrow. It's popping for you. So how did you make the transition? What was the turning point? That's a really good question, and I think it's a well. A thank you. One, it's a hard one to answer <laughs> because it was such a long process. Like it didn't happen overnight. It's not something that you suddenly right. just wake up and you're like, "I'm confident. Right. I love myself." Like it doesn't work like that. But genuinely, I was single. Yeah. I've, I've been single, and I, I I decided that I needed to spend time by myself, and that there right. was no one in this world that could reassure me, that could give me that that sense of love that I was searching for, nobody. Like, yes. And if I'm constantly yes. trying to validate myself, and, and that was what I was doing in my, in my previous relationship, I was yeah. constantly being, trying to look for validation from somebody that wasn't giving that to me. And you know, they say like, if you no, live for someone's compliments, you will die by their criticism. And that's what I was doing. Every Absolutely. time someone says bad, I'm Girl, like, you need to rewind and come again, selector on that line. You need to tell the people them again. Tell them again. <laughs> No, it's, a, it's a bar, it's a bar <laughs> It's a dropping bars in the, in the chat today. So, yeah, no, bars. If, you, if you live for compliments, you will die by criticism. And that is, that is it. So once I realised that, I decided that I needed to be single. I needed to take time for myself. Girl, I've been single ever since. Like, and I'm happy, you know, like, I decided yeah. that that was where, that was the space and the time that I needed for myself to just a hundred percent focus on myself that's when i yes. met you i started doing projects i started to just you know focus my mind on my goals and my ambition and started to place myself where i wanted to be and started yeah. to see myself as that person like you you know when they say show up as the woman you want to be Don't yes just, yes you know, and you will be her be. you will legit be her Honestly, I'm just going to take a moment because some of the some of the comments, you know, you've got you've got Robert basically supporting you and, and just saying, yeah, you've got to invest in yourself. You've got uh, Deval jumping on it and say, big up. I, I mean, this is this is amazing. You've got oh, you've got so much support. Eve saying truth. Was there um, any one person or an organisation maybe that you? you look to for, for support and help as well because there are I mean I talked about it in in the show last week we were focused on mental health which is close to my heart too but there are so many organizations that are available there are resources that there is help out there and either people don't know or they don't want to know or they might feel a bit uncomfortable but did you along your journey of let me get myself well for want of a better way of putting mm -hmm. it did you reach out to anybody at the time, I actually didn't know who to reach out to, and I had no idea about that. Like, you did all that by yourself? By myself, yeah. I didn't, oh, I didn't have any, like... You're amazing. You know, You're amazing. Uh, you know what? And I wouldn't recommend it, by the way. I'm not saying that that's how you should go about it, because I'm such an advocate for, like, talking to, you know, a professional. Yeah, getting Well, you are now, because you know. I know now, but at the time, I didn't yeah. know. And um, 
I've, I've, my biggest support is literally my friends. Like, if I could say that's my support, my friends have always been my support. Like, those are the people okay. that okay. I can talk to and I feel safe around. So I'm lucky to have friends like that. You know? Oh, I'm getting really emotional. <laughs> but I'm lucky to have Mama. friends like that. Girl, you can let it all out on this show. Girl. This is what Amplified is all about, man. If you need a cry, girl, cry. I did a I'm very ugly it. cry last week. I'm trying I'm not to do it again. This week. But I'm, I was, I'm blessed to have friends that... I can have Great. those hour Love conversations that. with and they can, yeah. you know, give me that, you know, reassurance when I need it. So, yeah, but therapy is definitely needed, you know, when you know. Definitely. When you I'm, a, I'm an advocate for therapy. Yeah, it's, it's all good. There's absolutely everything right with seeking therapy. It's there for a reason. Do you know what I mean? And it does the job. Give it a chance. You know what I mean? There's nothing embarrassing about it. There's nothing uncomfortable about it. These people that are doing the work of trying to help you get well, be that with your mind or your whatever it might be, they, they want to be in that position. They want to help you. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. And everything is confidential. They go at a pace that works for you. There's no pressure. Do you know what I mean? So... I, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for it. If people feel like they need to seek therapy, but they're feeling uncomfortable, that needs to be the new trend. It needs to be the in thing that people know. Yeah, let's go and get therapy and everybody's talking about it and it's cool. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. We need to make therapy cool because there's a lot of people that need it and don't realise. There's a lot of people that do realise they need it, but they shy away from it. Therapy 100%. is cool. I'll probably get a t-shirt made saying it, like, therapy go and get yourself some therapy. Cool. I'm, telling that. You, I'm telling I'll you. I'll buy that. Therapy but is cool. Nothing wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Cosine. Um, what do you think um, about the media? Just briefly, you know, the media's portrayal of body image, bodies in general, it's so, it's, it goes that end of the spectrum, this end of the spectrum, it's really bizarre. What, do, what would you change about the way the media, the way magazines and newspapers portray or represent or show the body? What, what do you think they need to do or stop doing? Stop, stop making bodies a trend like why are we having certain bodies trending like it's some like build a body factory like we could just go in and just get Kim Kardashian <laughs> body you know it's, it's real, all, and when you look at it like back in the 90s back in the two, early 2000s it wasn't fashionable to have curves it wasn't no, fashionable to have a big no, bum really. all the movies yeah. are like does my ass look fair in this it's, that was just the yeah. normal thing like everyone didn't want to have these certain features and then all of a sudden the features that thing. some people were living with all their life and maybe even yeah. being, yeah. you know, criticised for have become a trend. So that's yeah. the first thing. It's like, it's crazy how we live in a world where like a certain body type, and, and I know it's always been like that because, you know, even in the 60s and there's always trends, but... Do you know what though? In the 60s, it was more about uh, what we were wearing. Um, I say we like I was in the 60s. My mum was like growing up in the 60s and I've seen all the old school magazines from back then. And even when I was growing up, 80s and 90s, even with like Right On and Just 17 and all those kind of magazines, it was about accessories and clothing. And, you know, we were in baggy style. clothes. No, no, yeah. yeah, and hairstyles. No one was really talking about or checking for anyone's body. I actually don't know when this, this whole thing happened, but the media play a big part in how people perceive themselves because if you put an image out there and you say this is the image to aspire to or this is the image that you need to be in order for you to get through that that door over there then of course people are going to say well wow I need to change everything about myself because doors ain't opening if you know what I mean and I, I'm totally against that you know yeah. you've got to look a certain way dress a certain way nah be you be your it's authentic so exhausting. self it's and, it is exhausting. it is it is and especially when it's... I think for the journalists, it must be. Or every day must be a slow news day. I don't know. <laughs> but they, exactly. they, they need to change it. Or we just need to get rid of these magazines and newspapers permanently. Because people go and find their information online anyway. They, they, you you know, know, they're Googling the... stuff. They're yeah. watching TV. Yeah. Is anyone buying magazines and papers anymore? <laughs> I think, gonna... we, should get... I think what? we should get rid of them. Yeah, those magazines were so... I don't know what they're like now, because I don't really read them, like you're saying. Like, who does? But back in the yeah. day, they were brutal. Like, I remember any yeah. celebrity that put on an ounce of weight, you know, it would be like, she's put on 10 pounds now. She's just had a baby. And it's just yeah, like all yeah, over the yeah. front of Cosmopolitan too or whatever. Much. Yeah, and way it's too crazy much. Way how that much. is. Like, they really slander people. Now it's like, now I think they're a bit more careful about what they're saying because they, they yeah. get more backlash from it. But now... I've just seen that there's a, there's a question. Oh, oh, it's just someone saying, you go, girl. Who is that saying you go, girl? Shyla underscore 94. Oh. You go too, Shyla. I think they had um, do you have any questions, but I don't, I, I've been missing them. Let's have a look. 
Uh, did you put yourself out there or look for support? You did answer that one. Or was your perception that there is no support? So you did answer that and say that at the time you didn't know where to go for support. So you, you did that yourself. But uh, you, you would know now. Um, we're kind of going to get onto that because based on the, on the journey that you've been on with regaining your body confidence, and congratulations because I'm so chuffed that you now have that confidence back and oh. you're out there. Like I said, you've got a song coming out tomorrow. We're going to chat about it in a second. Yeah. But do you have any tips for body confidence? positivity body confidence i've got a few but yes. i wanted to come to you and see you know yes. if you have any that you can share with everybody i definitely do i definitely do and i know it's like the most cliche thing ever because we hear it so much but genuinely like what you say about yourself the words that come out of your mouth the things yes. that we say every day about ourselves even yes. that's just like i look so ugly i'm so fat i used to say that so constantly to myself my and life, then wow. subconsciously you start believing it so i started to change the way i spoke about myself um and i didn't allow myself to say certain things like i wouldn't say i'm so fat i wouldn't say i'm so this and that um that was the yeah. first thing because once i started to actually speak life into myself and speak positivity yes you just soak that up and eventually you know it doesn't you don't have these negative thoughts swimming around. Another tip that I really did was actually like looking into the mirror. I don't know, it's like a bit like T TMI, but literally looking at your body in the mirror and just appreciating yes. it. Because I, I go- Girl, I do this every day. I'm just, I'm putting it out there. I've done business, it's TMI. I look at myself, <laughs> but naked in, in the mirror every single day. I do, I do. Before I go into the shower, after I come out the shower, I look at myself butt naked and I check myself out because guess what? I'm hot, right? Exactly. As I am right now, I am Go hot. On. I need to appreciate. One day I'm going to be six feet under. Ain't no one going to be able to appreciate me then, you know what I'm saying? So you need to do that. I wholeheartedly agree with you. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on, on yeah. that. Have you got any more tips? Um, and obviously another thing with the whole social media thing, just knowing your triggers, knowing like what is causing you to maybe yes. like, contribute to the way you're feeling about yourself. Is it the people around you? Sometimes it's the friends you hang out with and what they, their viewpoints are. Because I've had people that have told me you need to lose weight to be a musician, you know, and then I've mm. had people that say, no, honey, you're fine. What, what are you talking about? So you got to know mm. who's, who you're surrounding yourself with, whether that's your friends or who you're following on the gram. Like if you're seeing yourself following people that when you look at their posts and you're feeling a bit mm, about yourself, unfollow them one time. You know, why are you going to put yourself through this. that? You know, when, yeah, why, why are you going to do that? So just be mindful of who you're surrounding yourself with and what you're taking in because mm. it really subconsciously does affect us and yeah. we don't even know. That's it. in every area of, of your life as well. Let's, let's wrap up this subject and then get into um, the game. But before we do, um, I knew you'd have some some great tips. I did I did have some, but I thought yeah. let me come to you first. But the ones that that I put down was acceptance, which is so important. I think if you're not accepting who you are, you know, in your reality, in your true form, right here, right now, you're gonna have lots of problems, and not just with your body, but with every aspect of your life. You, you've got to accept who you are, what you're about you know, where your mind goes, you, you have to, because otherwise everything else is a wrap, in, in, in my opinion. And then gratitude, I think is so important to be grateful for your body, for your yeah. skin, for what you've been blessed with. Hello, you've been created this way for a reason. Amen. Jane, so, so be, be thankful. Another tip I put down is wear clothes that are a good fit for your shape. Because there are some people out there, and again, I know it's fueled by what they're seeing, but just because something looks like it's it's nice in a size whatever that you know you are not, I know about that. don't mean you should go and buy that because it's not going to work out. Let's just be real. So go out there and get clothes that are a good fit for your shape. You've got curves, work it. You're slim, work it. Whatever your shape, your physique, your figure, there's clothes for you, man. Get them, put them on, get your groove on. It's going to work out. The other one I put was uh, focus on being healthy and fit, not, uh, you know, being a particular size. Like, who cares? Who cares? You go, as, for us as women, we know that if we go into Primark and we pick up something that's a size 10, we might go into Zara and we have to get it in a size 12. Like, n numbers are irrelevant. How irrelevant. are you feeling in your body? How are you feeling within yourself, right? So don't focus on a number. Focus on feeling healthy and being fit. That's what I would say anyway. And the other tip I put, the last one I put was, if you are someone that feels like you, you need to lose weight, it could be for a health reason, it could be for anything. That's not my business. But if you're struggling with you know because there's no gyms or you you don't have the money to pay your personal trainer number one there's so much available on youtube that's free 
One example is Chloe Ting. I do Chloe Ting's workouts at least once a week. That girl is a killer. There's also my, my boy Jay Brown, who might still be in, in the room. I am Jay Brown on Instagram. He does a class every single Saturday called Beast Mode. It's six pounds, six pounds, and it's amazing. Mm. Check that out. But there are other alternatives. You can go for a walk. That's a form of exercise. You can skip. It's a form of exercise. You can dance around in your yard. That's a Love form of that. exercise. You can buy yourself a hula hoop and hula hoop around you. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's real. Some people, you know, they want to exercise, but it, but it puts them off, especially, again, Instagram. You see all the flaws and, and you don't have that at home. You don't have the kettlebell, the dumbbell, and you don't have the money for the resistance bands. But guess what? don't need them just, you can walk. just jump up and down you can, you can, you can <laughs> skip you can jump up and down. exactly so that was just another tip that i wanted to give to people and finally on this um subject you and i talked about it over the phone mm -hmm. we did decide that we're not going to go into it on the live because we didn't want to risk offending or upsetting people um but what i just wanted to share with people if you um, are going through body dysmorphic disorder or you know somebody that is please go and google body dysmorphic disorder foundation okay body dysmorphic disorder foundation um there's so much information there are other people's stories that you can read um and there there's there's a great team there that can support you if you need it that's that's all i'm gonna say because i don't want to get in trouble either um but thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I really respect and appreciate that you just came on here. You've never shared this publicly before. You've not, you know, come on lives and stuff and you've just gone, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get in. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody watching does as well. Yeah. If anyone has any questions um, for Shalana, like now is the time. My lovely friend Sally is saying that she has a friend um, who does a daily workout it's 15 pound a month sally can you drop do they have instagram can you drop their instagram handle yeah, into the drop comments? That in. <clears throat> excuse me because that would be really really cool but yeah, if anyone has any questions or anything you want to share on this subject please feel free to do so now or use the question um boxes to your right otherwise you know what time it is i'm ready to play my game <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Actually, while I, I'm ready, while I'm I give ready. people time to drop, to drop in their uh, questions, I just want to give a shout out to my sponsor uh, of this episode. Um, I am Adored UK. They're a jewelry brand. Jewelry with purpose is how they describe themselves, and they are amazing. It's unique pieces designed to empower the wearer. Hello. So if you are still wanting to buy your Valentine a gift, a belated birthday, you just want to treat yourself. They're giving 20% off and their website, everything is affordable anyway, 20% off. All you have to do is follow I am adored UK on Instagram, slide in their DMs with the word amplified in capital letters and they'll give you the code for 20% off. Trust me, the brand is amazing. Thank you, Sally. She's just dropped in um, the Instagram handle. So it's Monday to Friday at just underscore Jean, G-E-E-N. Uh, and that's daily workouts, 15 pound a month. Um, and actually, Sally on her own Instagram, she does go on about these um, classes. And I've been thinking I should join myself. So maybe that's the thing. Yeah, All right. Yeah. We're going to get into the game. Feel free to drop whatever you want to drop into the um, into the comment box. We can, you know, answer questions and stuff in between the game. But we're going to play the memory game. Are you ready, girl? I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's go. I love this game so much. So how this works is there's four rounds. Um, you're going to get a word and literally that word, you just tell us a, a personal story that relates to that word. The okay. fourth and final round, I'm going to ask the people watching uh, to give you a word. Hopefully they keep it PG, yeah. but I'll be coming to them to ask them. Are you ready to play? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes. Your first word is love. <sighs> love. love. You know what? So I can share a memory about love. Yes. Aww. You know what? It's so random, but I love my dog so much. <laughs> oh, that, that's not random. That's nice. It's, you know what? I always say that if humans were more like dogs, yeah. we would Girl. live a beautiful life. Like the unconditional love that I receive from my dog. I literally look him in the eyes and I'm like, I don't think anyone in the whole universe is ever going to love me the way that you love me. Like, <laughs> honestly, like, the love. So animals are the best. Animals yeah. and the love that they can give and the love that they can bring. Oh, love it. So, yeah, that's mine. What's your dog's name and what breed, what breed is the dog? His name's Max and he's a Border Collie. I would get him up here, but I do, yeah, and it's just long. He's going to start like <laughs> that. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. You can share a picture of him on your Instagram stories later for, for us all to see. All right, your second word is fun. 
fun. Oh my gosh, when's the last yeah. time I had fun? <laughs> when's the last time? I mean, girl. <laughs> the last time you you had a really fun experience. Um, I know. I mean, like randomly taking a trip to the beach, girls. But like it was yeah. so fun. We just went to the beach, like had a good time, and I feel like <laughs> what I've learned about fun nowadays it's just the simple things literally like now that we're in a different space i can appreciate fun like yes i'm telling you nothing. <laughs> i'm telling you there's yeah, a new fun. kind of fun out here painting my nails is now fun do you know what i mean it's no longer an arduous task it's like oh this is fun this is something good to do all right your do. third word from me and then we're going to get your final word from the uh, people watching is crew See what I did there? Crew. Hey, 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 crew. Good one. Um, yes. For me, honestly, when I think about my crew, I think about my friends. I think about the people that I've got a lot of old time friends, like friends that I've known since primary school. Like, love that. Love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. But also, crew has another meaning for you. <laughs> yeah. I've got a new song coming out tomorrow called Crew. <laughs> so that was a good plug. But yeah, crew, um, I've got a new track tomorrow. It's with JJ Musica, who is a sick producer. And it's called Crew. It's my first single after a whole year of releasing. I had a bit of a, a ghost little moment. I released my EP back in 2019. And now I'm coming with something new for you guys. It's a different yes. vibe. It's a bit like, I, I'm, I do R&B normally. So if you guys, anyone heard my music, it's very much on the like, you know, soft R&B vibe. Yeah, yeah. This one's a banger. <laughs> this one will get you up. Listen, wait, you're going to play us a little, a little, you're going to give us a little exclusive at the end. You're going you. to play some of it. Yeah. Um, let's come to, let's, I can't wait because you know, I, you know, already I've had it on repeat. I love it. Um, let's come to everybody watching. Has anyone got a word for Shalana for the anyone memory game? It can literally be anything, but just keep it clean. Yeah. Keep it PG. Keep it PG. Anyone got any words? Can be music related. Music related. Can be related to this live. I know you got worried. I had the word <laughs> what we got? You know what? I don't Zach know. makes. I can tell you what. Zach makes me laugh. I absolutely adore this dude. Zach rocks up to every live and always gets involved about what he's doing. I'm cooking while listening. But how about the word pesto? <laughs> Literally, I don't have much relation to the word pesto. I, I, it's nice. It's cool. I don't even eat. I think I need to eat it more. I feel like I, I'm missing out on something here. <laughs> Lots of people talk about the like, pesto, and I'm just like, okay, you know. But hope your pesto turns out good. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Okay, the Flicksters are asking favorite dance move. I mean, what's there's three words there. Let's go with dance. Let's go with dance. Dance. Okay, my first memory of dance was when I was about eight or nine. I did like ballet lessons and tap dancing and did you? Cool. Yeah, I did like. Oh my gosh! Can you still do tap and all that? Yeah, I, I used to do tap dancing. I used to do ballet. I knew all the classical moves. I was doing that for quite a while. Like, super, super. I loved it. it was you great. really are crazy talented. I did not know that about you. I wasn't that great, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but okay, let's just turn the volume down on that then. <laughs> I'm no, like, wow. Well, yeah, I wasn't that great. <laughs> yeah. I feel like now, though, with dancing, I love it. I do love dancing, but I just haven't... Yeah. 
you know, I need to go to some dance lessons or something. Anyone, anyone have any dance lessons that you know of that I could rock up to? Because I would love to go to some, like... Do you know what? Actually, there is, there's a girl I know called Katie. I don't know her Instagram handle off by heart, but she does really sick classes. She's always advertising them. Yeah. So actually, I'll hook you up with that. Listen, yeah. I love the fact that we just played that game. Thank you for getting involved. Before we go, though, I want you to tell people about Under London. Now, I don't know if Under London is still active. I yeah. know you and Caroline are doing that. Your friend Caroline, you were doing that back in the day. Yeah. Um, but tell people about it because yeah. that for me I remember when you guys told me about that all, all them years ago I was like you this is what I, why I said you need to come on the show yeah. it's such a stick project that you guys yeah. uh, put together so let everyone know about it it was my first ever project that I actually did after university it is still running Caroline is currently running it I'm no longer part of it in terms of actively okay. running it because I've got so much on like my life is full yeah. of so much different creativity but it's a sick platform let me tell you it's all about um you know supporting up-and-coming filmmakers especially in london so we at the time were putting on loads of events for up-and-coming filmmakers screening i met so many people through that it was such a good networking opportunity build along that line it's at under london u-n-d-r-l-n-d-n and you find loads of news about what's kind of what's happening in the scene you know, that was the whole point yeah. to kind of bring out a... Um, it is really, really good. Scene. And when I when I share the live afterwards on the replay, I'll, I'll tag it in, in the comments that, yeah. um, so people can see. Um, and finally, before we let you go, um, I know you're going to play your song, I can't wait for it, I'm buzzing, I'm itching to get there. But I want you to take the opportunity to amplify someone. Who is someone that you think everybody needs to know about? They're amazing, they're doing great things, and you just want to shine a light on them. Oh, well, I don't know if she's still in the chat. I did see her come up, but my cousin, Lani, she's in, she's from New York. And you know what, like, I yeah. have a, such a good relationship with my family in New York. And it's so lovely to be able to have family, like, even though you're distant, yeah. but, um, yeah. you know, you still have that connection. But she is one of the most amazing women I know. And I had a conversation with the other day. Yes. Preach. <laughs> I love it. T tell, tell us her name again. Okay. but yeah she is I love her so much too. but yeah yes <laughs> Um, so yeah, I love that. Right, this is this is the moment I've been waiting for. Let's just get into it. I want to I want to hear this banger. I want to hear this banger. So introduce okay. your track to everybody, hey, um, and then you're well. gonna play a little bit for us to hear. Yeah, this is this so. is an exclusive, people, because it's not out yet. It's coming out tomorrow. So guys, oh! I'm so excited to be able to share this with you because literally the journey has been a real one. So I'm so excited. Thank you, Charlie, for having me. Um, you're welcome. JJ, sick producer been working with him for so long since i was 17 we produced this new band that's called crew gonna play you a little snippet hope you guys like it if you got a drink with you you got any you know wind up your ways have a good time but this is crew for you guys let me know if you can hear it you want to roll with a crew want to roll yes. with a crew you can bring your bread dreams too long as they're gonna stay cool Come with the henny and the juice, good five stars, feeling brand new. Woo! Know that we gotta stay true, day one, yeah, we gotta stay true, cause we roll with the crew. I'ma stick it on you like glue, Let's push it one time, one, two, one, two. If you want, boy, you can come true, come around for the debut. Come around cause you know my cue. I love the fact that you're there just vibing with your own tune, I love it. <laughs> no, you can roll with the crew. So sick. Thank you, Shalana. Thank you so much. I love it. Big shout to Nita, the writer. I just seen her in the building. You two actually should connect and, and, and do some work together. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I'm waiting for it to get to the chorus. So you guys can hear a little the bit. Flip, the, the fix was saying, boy. 
People are loving it. They're liking it. Are you just trying to be in the car? Don't you know you're just a plus for far? Oh, no, nigga. Nita saying nice vibe. Angela Sun saying sounds awesome. The whole class away, but I thought, you know, let it build up. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's such a banger. <laughs> thank you so much girl for joining me it's been it's been a pleasure i'm gonna catch up with you real real soon really appreciate you joining us take care sweetheart you're welcome Guys, that's it for this week. So sorry if I missed anybody's comments or anybody's questions. Do always tell me off and I'll come back to you. Got another amazing show for you next week. Uh, next week, I'll be dressed in a particular outfit. <laughs> so make of that what you will. But join me next week, Thursday at 7 p.m. for another episode of Amplified. Mwah! Thank you so much for checking.